Okay, well, I have the honor today, as you, you now know, of talking to Prince Max, CEO of LGT Group. Um, and the topic is climate crisis, something that was obviously uh, thoroughly discussed in the last session and something that should be foremost in all of our minds, I would say. Now, you've heard from the previous speaker um, that global emissions must be reduced by about half by 2030 to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees. And without that, we face potentially irreversible catastrophic consequences for our world, our world as we know it. Net emissions must be uh, zero by 2050. So there's an urgency for all sectors to act, whether government, business, the individual, and Prince Max, uh, LGT, within the LGT. Uh, you've been a leader for many years thinking about sustainability. Um, Tell me about your early journey and where where this has taken LGT and why you have felt the urgency to act where others perhaps have not. Um, yes, I think um, to, to answer that question, um, probably it's helpful to have a, a little bit of background. Um, LGT um, is a, um, a private business. It's controlled um, by um, my family um, that has a very long um, history spanning over um, 900 years for um, over um, 30 generations and as such we have always prided ourselves and we have seen it as a little bit of our legacy um, uh, to be long term oriented um, uh, and to think and act um, also very much in consideration of um, uh, future generations and then personally um, I grew up in Liechtenstein um, uh, that has beautiful nature and uh, I'm a very um, healthy and inclusive society. And um, I really learned to appreciate that um, as I was traveling around the world and I, as I realized um, uh, that um, uh, this nature um, uh, and um, uh, such a society um, uh, is very much um, uh, the exception rather than the norm. And so when I became CEO um, of LGT, um, I um, uh, took the step to found um, uh, or the former foundation called the LGT Venture Philanthropy that is dedicated um, uh, to um, uh, social inclusiveness um, uh, and to the protection of um, uh, the environment. And after we have formed that LGT Venture um, uh, Philanthropy Foundation, it has led um, uh, to um, uh, a broader rollout um, of um, uh, social um, uh, and environmental um, of a social and environmental agenda across all of um, LGT. So that, that was a, but that was an important starting point. Um, and actually, um, uh, you have had a, a bit of a role um, uh, in, in that um, uh, because um, uh, you have been involved in the foundation. Um, uh, and um, I met you um, uh, shortly before I um, formed LGT Venture for And what have been some of your uh, learnings in terms of incorporating climate, social and environmental considerations across your business? Yeah, clearly there have been many um, uh, learnings, but um, I, I think one is um, uh, very, very important, um, and that's the, um, uh, the conclusion um, uh, that um, uh, the integration um, of social and environmental objectives, um, uh, but also initiatives across all um, our business has really not hurt our business, but it has, has helped it, has really strengthened um, its position. I'm firmly convinced um, uh, that having a broader um, uh, value creation ambition that goes beyond just um, uh, shareholder um, uh, value creation um, has helped us um, uh, to create broader value, um, of course for our um, uh, clients, um, uh, but also um, uh, very importantly for our employees, um, uh, suppliers, um, uh, for society and the uh, um, uh, planet um, at large. I think um, uh, this broader agenda has created a lot of positive um, uh, feedback groups, um, has um, influenced and driven our um, uh, reputation, um, has driven loyalty, um, uh, and has anchored us um, uh, in um, uh, the broader um, ecosystem that is relevant um, in a much stronger way. No, very important, clearly very important and something I think that a lot of institutions don't think about um, when you know, conducting daily business. 
So just following along from that, uh, recently the business, the New York-based business, business roundtable said corporations show, should show off the last half century of shareholder-focused capitalism and understand that they're responsible to all stakeholders. You heard this. Did you think that this was a, a watershed moment or an empty statement on the part of a relatively influential group? I actually um, really um, was very pleased um, uh, when I saw it, um, and as I reflected about it, um, I, I do think it was a, a watershed um, a moment because, um, as you pointed out, um, uh, the people who published that statement um, are um, uh, very influential um, uh, and senior um, U.S. CEOs um, who, I believe, um, have recognized um, uh, that um, business needs to correct its fundamental um, purpose um, uh, because the um, single focus just on shareholder value um, has just not created um, enough broader value creation for society um, uh, and of course it has also um, impacted um, uh, the planet um, uh, in, as we just heard in the speech before, um, in a pretty um, uh, bad way. Um, uh, so I think um, it, it is an interesting statement. Um, uh, it's also um, uh, quite profound because it um, uh, it breaks um, uh, with one of the um, uh, very fundamental um, uh, beliefs of a capitalistic approach that has dominated um, uh, the, um, the leadership, the, the business leadership um, around the world, and particularly um, in the US, um, uh, going all the way back um, uh, to Milton Friedman um, in the 70s. So I think from a historical perspective, um, uh, this statement um, uh, will be viewed as, um, as a meaningful contributor um, uh, to um, a system um, change that um, is necessary um, and probably a little bit overdue. Yeah. So do you think the finance sector is starting to take note? Do you think that that was a message that was heard? I think um, the um, finance sector um, as um, a lot of the other sectors um, has realized um, that um, change needs to occur. Um, uh, but what we are seeing is that um, uh, change is difficult. Um, uh, and um, uh, from my perspective, um, uh, change is not happening um, uh, fast enough. Um, uh, it's too slow. So we need to become bolder. Um, uh, and um, uh, we need to tweak um, uh, the system in a more significant way. Yeah, we've heard, absolutely, we've heard from Pavan this morning and from uh, the previous speaker, you know, again about the urgency of making that change now, uh, as difficult as that may be, and it will involve potentially sort of transforming our economies, our transportation, the way we live, our consumption. I mean, these are significant changes, um, sort of sweeping changes. So, what do you think is the role that the finance sector actually should be playing um, in this transition to zero net carbon? Or, I, I guess, or is that even the right question that we should be asking? Should we instead be squarely focused on the sort of on the risk and the opportunity, given the um, and how to define both, given the you know the paradigm shift that we face? Look, I think um, uh, that the finance sector um, has a major role um, uh, to play because um, uh, the finance um, uh, sector um, in every economy um, uh, is very much in the heart of it um, uh, because um, it plays a major role. It has a major influence. Um, on the capital allocation process. Um, but if we look um, at this capital allocation process um, over the last 30 years, um, uh, we have to admit that it hasn't been very efficient. Um, it has, um, in many ways, um, failed. Um, why? Because we have been looking um, at businesses um, in a too narrow way. Um, uh, the um, uh, sector um, has failed um, uh, to adjust um, uh, for um, uh, the broad-based market failures um, uh, that are out there. 
aber wo ist der Financial Sector, but the broader um, economy system um, has done a very poor job um, in integrating um, both positive, um, but probably more importantly negative externalities um, into um, our system. Um, so, um, but what we are seeing is that there are companies out there um, that create a lot of positive um, impact. Um, and um, uh, let's think about, for example, schools, um, uh, renewable um, energy businesses, many healthcare businesses. Um, uh, those positive um, sort of um, uh, value creation um, effects of those businesses are not rewarded very much. And on the flip side, um, uh, there are of course a lot of businesses out there um, uh, that are pretty dirty, um, uh, that um, uh, create um, uh, negative externalities that are quite significant. You can think about um, uh, some dirty energy um, uh, businesses, but to be more specific, we can go also in other sectors and be provocative. Um, uh, I would name, for example, now um, Coca-Cola, um, uh, that um, uh, might generate a lot of cash still, um, uh, but if you look at its broader impact um, on society, thinking about um, uh, the, um, the billions of plastic bottles, um, uh, thinking about um, uh, the highly sh sugary drinks um, uh, in a context of a gigantic obesity um, uh, problem, I don't think um, uh, it's creating um, a lot of positive um, uh, value. Um, uh, and These things need to come out um, uh, more um, uh, to the forefront. We need to start charging businesses um, uh, when they're creating negative impact. Um, uh, somebody needs to pay um, uh, for the gigantic pollution um, uh, that is occurring, um, either the companies or um, uh, the consumers, um, uh, but we can't just leave, leave it up um, uh, to the next generation. So I do think um, uh, that in conclusion that um, that um, uh, the um, uh, financial service sector um, needs to change, um, uh, needs to do a better job um, in, um, in in capital allocation um, uh, going forward. And absolutely, and that word impact is uh, so important. It's obviously, the impact of the investing sector has grown exponentially over the last two, even five or six years. But what we need, as you've said so rightly, is to think more broadly across sort of all financial services and across the entire industry. So what is what is needed for that to happen? What is needed for you know us to respond to the, the cry from the IPCC, from our previous speaker, others, um, to really act on behalf of our planet? What, what is what is going to take uh, what is it going to take to get the finance sector to broadly change? I think um, we need a couple of things. First of all, um, the disclosures um, of um, uh, companies about their broader impact on society and the environment um, need to become better, um, and that ought to be um, sort of regulated and demanded in a, in a smart way. And then once we have these um, uh, disclosures, um, uh, we need to act upon um, and of course it will be um, uh, very helpful um, if then these disclosures um, are being assessed. And they shouldn't be assessed um, uh, by 60 different entities. That's what's happening a little bit at the moment. Um, uh, so none of them has a lot of authority. I would very much welcome the emergence of um, two to three impact rating businesses very much like Moody's um, and Standard and Poor's are um, uh, rating risk, we need to, um, to um, see highly credible um, organizations emerge that then rank um, according to impact. Um, and then um, uh, that can lead um, uh, to um, incentives um, uh, that um, uh, can be linked to that. Um, for the financial services industries, for investors, um, uh, but also um, uh, for potentially the taxman um, uh, and um, uh, for other um, uh, regulations. So 
better disclosures, um, a more systemic um, approach um, uh, to assessing those disclosures so that those companies that leave a bad impact in the world, um, uh, that, that becomes much more transparent um, and that people then act on that transparency. Right. I have a question from the audience here. Um, what's the specific reason Europe's ahead in the race of sustainability finance and investments? And what are your views on going green financing rules and standards? Are they harmonized? I, I think um, Europe um, has um, a number of regions um, that are really passionate um, about um, nature um, and thinking about water societal um, impacts. Those tend to be more in the north of Europe. Um, I think the Scandinavians are really leaders. Um, the um, and a couple of other um, places well that, that are ahead. Um, and then I think the EU, frankly, um, and the sort of um, sometimes um, uh, we, we complain about the lack of accountability um, in the um, in, in the, the Brussels of bureaucracy. Well, I do think that there are actually quite a lot of people in Brussels um, who are quite idealistic um, and um, who are starting to to sort of think about um, our smart um, our regulations. Um, we will see what's going to come out there. So I think there's a couple of there are a couple of ideas that go in the direction that. Um, uh, that I would like to see, but um, the devil is in the detail. Um, and uh, yeah, so hopefully um, Europe um, uh, will be able to come up with something um, uh, that makes sense, that can then be also adapted as a broader standard in the world. Um, but it's very important that there is a good exchange um, of best ideas, also on the regulatory side, um, are taking place. So um, I would hope. Um, uh, that um, regulators, um, uh, legislators around the world um, uh, start to be more daring um, about um, impactful um, and sensible policy um, in that space. Yeah. Because I think it's going to be needed. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you're obviously a leader in terms of sustainability. Just briefly, how are how it's not a brief question, but how have you seen your views change over time in terms of thinking around around these issues, just to help bring other people along with you that perhaps aren't quite there yet? Look, I think um, it has been a, a very, very um, exciting and um, educational um, journey. Um, one of our um, sort of um, big focus um, points that um, I find particularly interesting is our impact investing um, effort. Um, where we are looking to invest um, in um, solutions, in companies um, that um, will help us um, to address a lot of the problems um, that are out there. And a lot of these companies are um, powered um, by um, technologies, um, have a very deep understanding um, about the science um, that um, is often um, sort of a key piece in the understanding. So um, let's face it, um, also impact assessment isn't something which is going to be easy, it isn't something which is going to be uncontroversial, um, but um, uh, we, we need to work on it, um, and, um, and it's a process, and it has been an interesting process um, for us, and it has helped us um, to see the broader um, trend. Uh, I, I clearly want to make sure um, that we shift our clients um, into um, companies that are benefiting um, from these mega trends, um, rather than sitting in companies um, that um, are going to face significant um, headwinds um, from um, these broader challenges um, out there. So, um, so it has been a journey um, for the entire organization. Um, uh, and we have also a long way to go, um, uh, but um, uh, I enjoy it. Let's talk about that a little bit, just uh, again briefly, you've got just 50 seconds, but uh, what are your aspirations for LGT looking forward? Look, I think um, uh, as you have um, sort of heard, um, I very much believe that um, we need to be focused on a broad value creation um, uh, framework, um, uh, really 
um, creating value um, for um, our clients, um, for our partners, um, uh, investing in, in, in and supporting um, uh, great companies. Because I think that will drive our uh, most of our shareholder um, value going forward. So I would like us to continue to um, uh, to grow um, as an organization, uh, but also to continue to strengthen um, our um, impact um, out there um, in a sustainable way. Um, and I think that will um, lead us to um, uh, to strengthen our private equity impact um, in the investing business. I think it will um, uh, we will work more closer um, uh, with or closer with, with regulators um, uh, going forward, um, uh, trying to build coalitions um, uh, with others because um, at the end of the day um, uh, we're all in the same boat here um, uh, and um, uh, it's going to be it's going to require a collaborative effort. Thank you very much, uh, Prince Max, and I think we should all heed his call for action, for urgent action. A uh, round of applause, please, for Prince Max. Thank you. Thank you.